Windows 11 was released back in October of 2021 and I'm sure our audience already know about this. However, did Microsoft make enough changes and upgrades to Windows 11 to justify the version upgrade? Wasn't Windows 10 supposed to be the last version of Windows? That aside, the new Windows 11 is also said to be designed with touch interfaces or touch screens in mind. So, in today's video, what I'm gonna do is just use Windows 11 on a touch device and we are using the ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED. So let's start off with a little bit of interaction. The reason why we're using the ASUS VivoBook Slate 13 OLED is because this machine is literally a tablet that has a keyboard attachment and also a stand at the back. It's pretty much an alternative to the Microsoft Surface devices. And I've also installed a fresh copy of Windows 11 so that we have a clean comparison between Windows 10 and also Windows 11. But where do we start in terms of the Windows 11 experience? So I think the best part is we can just start by talking about the start menu. The start menu icon has now been redesigned and it is now placed here at the leftmost side of this centered row of icons that is pinned on the taskbar. By pressing on the start menu now brings up a new start menu and it's now more reminiscent of start menus from Chrome OS actually. We have the search bar at the top whereby the search functionality is still as horrible as it is in Windows 10 and it still has a lot of pre-installed bloatware into a fresh copy of Windows 11 like Disney+, Plus, Clipchamp, Amazon Prime Video, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and yeah, luckily we don't have Candy Crush now though. I'm really frustrated by Microsoft charging us money for a Windows license and still have pre-installed bloatware like this. We can remove them, sure, like Disney Plus for example, we can just hold on to it. What? Hold on to it, press uninstall, uninstall. Yes, we can do that, but it's still an annoying thing to do with every single fresh installation of Windows 11. We have yet another button here to show all apps, which is bringing up the old Windows 10 start menu instead. And I would just have to say that there's a lot of wasted space because on the right side here, it's just totally blank and to shut down your Windows 11 PC we have to hit the button here and then all the menus come out there. But in case you don't like the centered icons here though you can actually move it to the left side by hitting taskbar settings, go on to the taskbar behavior, taskbar alignment, press left and then everything goes to the left side. But that is a totally separate setting from literally bringing the entire taskbar to the left side of the screen. That is something doable on Windows 10, but somehow it's not doable now on Windows 11. I don't know why. And just to show you what I mean, we have a Windows 10 makeshift touch display here. So, okay, I think you can see it right now, right? So what we have to do is actually to go into the settings menu, taskbar settings. Then we can see taskbar location on screen, move it to the left entirely. This is something that I personally use for a lot of years and I personally prefer this setup. I just don't know why Windows 11 doesn't let us move the whole taskbar to the left side. So you get a side by side comparison. Left side, left align icons, not left side taskbar. At this point in time, we are about 3 months into the launch of Windows 11 and Microsoft definitely heard a lot of complaints regarding the new polarizing context menu. This one, when you hold on to the right click and then this menu comes up. Microsoft said that they are implementing this nested menu style so that all of the important things will always stay the same. And yeah, I kind of get it. This is something great for those less savvy users who install a bunch of stuff and the context menu becomes the jungle of buttons. The new context menu after getting some updates now has cut, copy and paste at the top here. So let me just select this dummy file. Then we can see cut, paste, no this is copy, rename, share and trash button. And then we have every other buttons for file management, something like that at the bottom here. And it kind of works out really well here. However, accessing the context menu options for other apps, for example 7-zip, 
requires you to press this show more options button. I don't have 7-zip installed, but it will be shown in this part of the menu instead. And this context menu is 100% the same as on Windows 10. And one thing that I want to highlight is that Windows 11, the context menu actually has a wider gap between each of the items. So it's much more easier for touchscreen interface users to actually navigate using this button here. But on Windows 10, they also have this feature, although it's not really that clearly conveyed. So you see, if we use a touchscreen, bring up the context menu, these buttons here are already bigger than the normal regular right click. So if I just use a mouse right click, for example, it's a lot tinier in terms of the gap, but if I use the touch screen, it's a lot wider. And the most infuriating part for me is actually the new bottom row of corner buttons here, which is also called the system icons. And by tapping on the new time and date now brings notifications and also the calendar view. But the button beside it though is actually the new quick settings, the all-in-one menu that combine Wi-Fi, Bluetooth settings, uh, your audio and everything else. This menu is pretty much a mess. To connect Wi-Fi, we first need to tap on this button here and then tap on this little arrow icon beside the Wi-Fi icon to select what Wi-Fi network we want to connect to. But do make sure that you hit the correct part of this button or else you'll be turning off your Wi-Fi instead. And if you want to select your audio source, let's just say you want to change from the loudspeakers to your Bluetooth headphones, you have to do something similar as well. At first, you need to tap on this button, bring up the menu, and then the volume slider here, there's a little arrow icon at the side. Press on that and then we can select what audio output device we want to use. I mean, there are some good things when it comes to this quick settings menu. It is actually quite reminiscent of Android and iOS devices with those quick settings menu as well. And we even have a brightness slider here, which is only usable on laptops right away. If you want to learn more about it, check out the video at the top right corner there. This all-in-one interface for all your quick settings is actually great for touchscreen users. But what about for those who actually do not have a touchscreen, for example, desktop users? We plugged in a mouse to the ASUS VivoBook Slate 13 OLED and I immediately realized that mm, there are a few more issues that come along with it. You see, the quick settings menu has another layer of interactivity with a mouse scroll wheel. So let's just say, mouse, are you up yet? I need to turn it on. Okay, so let's just say we click on this and then the mouse cursor is on the brightness slider. I can just spin the scroll wheel, if you can see it. Then you can adjust the brightness. That's really handy. The same goes to the volume as well. But that's the problem. It only works when your mouse cursor is directly on top of the slider. Well, I felt like this is not really that good for users coming from Windows 10. So let me just move everything around for now. I'm going to plug in the mouse to the Windows 10 PC. And on Windows 10, what we can do is actually just hit this volume here. And then wherever the mouse cursor is, we can just spin the scroll wheel and the volume can be adjusted. And to select your audio inputs, outputs, for example, you can just tap on the name above the volume slider, then we can select whatever speaker we want to use. And we also have to talk about the Windows Explorer. Well, for someone who uses list view like I do, well, we are in for a treat actually. So as you can see here, one thing's for sure, Windows 11 is really making the gap between all of these items larger so it's easier for touchscreen interface users but it really screws us mouse users so one thing's for sure though if i'm gonna use windows 11 the file explorer here will need me to train my muscle memory to accommodate to this extra gap that is now present on windows 11. I really just wish Microsoft will give us an option to actually toggle this gap to either be there or not. I mean, we already have these kind of options in the Windows Explorer, right? So why not just include that option as well? And one more big downgrade for Windows 11 users on both touchscreen and mouse users is that opening Task Manager is now a super massive hassle. 
On Windows 10, what we could do is just right click on this taskbar here. Then we can just press Task Manager and hey, there you go, Task Manager. Real simple, right? What we have to do now on Windows 11, since that option is no longer available, it's only taskbar settings if you right click on the taskbar. It's either we hit Windows X to bring up this menu and then press T as a shortcut to bring up Task Manager or we can do the traditional way of Control, Alt and Delete. Then we have still have to press Task Manager, yeah. It's a big hassle. So, should you upgrade to Windows 11? Well, it's more like you don't have a choice. Sooner or later, you have to upgrade to Windows 11 anyway. Sooner, because you have the new 12th gen Intel Outer Lake processors and that is because Windows 10 doesn't know how to properly allocate the tasks to the P cores and E cores effectively. So you need to upgrade to Windows 11 to make full use of your new 12th gen Intel cores. Later is because Windows 10 is currently on live support. On 14th of October 2025, Microsoft will just yank all support from Windows 10. So in the meantime, you can get some utilities to make Windows 11 feel more like Windows 10. A must-have utility that I have come across is actually called Start All Back. For just $4.99 US dollars, you can customize how much control you want to make it go 100% back to Windows 10 or even Windows 7 for that matter. Or maybe you just want to mix and match between Windows 11 and Windows 10, you can do that as well. Context menus, quick settings, and even the taskbar can be moved back to the left side. That's good! And that's all we have to share with you when it comes to Windows 11. Do keep in mind that we are only 3 months into the launch of Windows 11, so more things might change in the future. So keep that in mind, and so far I'm still using Windows 10, I don't have any reason to upgrade to Windows 11 just yet. So yeah, if you have already installed Windows 11, do share with us your experience down in the comment section below. And if you have not upgraded to Windows 11, yeah, share your experience on why not. And we'll see you guys in the next video.